Hi there! Um, in this series of videos I will be restoring this Wang 2200F mini computer. Um, the 2200 uh, series was released by Wang, if I remember correctly, in 1973, originally as a computer with a separate CPU box and a terminal. This version is different, it's the F version, and they put the entire mini computer inside a terminal case. It's a mini computer because the CPU is not a microprocessor. It's an entire board, a card with 113 discrete TTL chips. So this should be a lot of fun to review and restore. So let's begin by opening it up and uh, having a look inside. This case was originally created for one of Wang's terminals, so to house a mini computer they had to put a fan, so they just took what appears to be to have been an hacksaw and <laughs> cut a hole into this, uh, very misformed. Um, it's missing the fan, I cannot really use this computer without a fan, so I will put a modern AC fan in there, make sure it runs cool, these old TTL chips run very hot. These are uh, holders for a, a little strip of paper uh, that uh, Wang um, delivered with the, the computer where you could just write down whatever special functions you've programmed on the function keys. And when you remove this strip, right underneath there are uh, the two screws that screw the, the part of the case that covers the keyboard and screws it down. So to disassemble the thing you have to remove uh, those two screws. So with the case off, we see that there are three cards. This first card is responsible for the I.O., including generating the video signal. There's a huge heat sink. This little board here is the power supply board, responsible for generating the six power rails. Uh, the CRT assembly is old, but I think is working. There are some enormous uh, uh, filter capacitors for the rectifier. A very solid metal keyboard with uh, robust uh, switches. And that pass transistor they are connected to the huge uh, um, heatsink probably gets very warm, so I'll change it uh, later. Now the seller turned it on uh, to make a, a, a picture, so whatever uh, was to blow in this computer by turning it on has blown already. <laughs> so I turned it on after a quick inspection, trying to see if I get an image. The potentiometers that control brightness and contrast are very scratchy, but you can see random characters on the screen. So a lot is working. The character generator is working because the characters are well formed. Um, the video uh, signal generation circuitry, the first card we saw, is working because we get a signal. And now obviously the computer is not booting because the first thing it does is to clear the screen memory. And what we are seeing here are just the random contents uh, of screen memory. So we will have to look further into, uh, into what's going on here. There are spacers uh, uh, separating uh, the boards to, to avoid short circuit and improve uh, air circulation. So the first thing I need to do is to remove the spacers before I can take the cards out. And the gloves you see me wearing are ESD safe gloves. It's to avoid uh, the risk of electrostatic discharge from my hands to the board and you know, ruining some of these 45 year old uh, ICs in there. The cards are almost fused with the backplane, so I use some deoxid D5 to, to lubricate the contacts and make it easier to, to pull the cards out. Finally, this first card is the I.O. card, it produces the video signal, you can see the connector there that goes into the monitor assembly. 
Now this next card, uh, this one, that's the CPU, the central processing unit. It's made up of 113 discrete TTL chips, if I counted right. There is one ROM as well uh, in there. This is the heart of the computer. It's the thing that implements the renowned Wang uh, instruction set uh, architecture. Um, it's a special card. I hope this one is uh, intact. Pretty hard to remove as well. Everything seems to be stuck. But hiding behind this card is the memory card with the RAM uh, uh, of the system and the ROM, including all the microcode uh, stuff um, hiding in there. Eventually I did manage to remove it. Uh, that's the CPU, CPU board on my desk. Next to it is the I.O. board uh, that I had removed earlier and we finally exposed uh, the memory board. But first a quick shot of this wonderful golden, uh, gold pinned uh, 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 ROM, um, part of the I.O. Uh, circuit. And there it is, that's the RAM ROM uh, board uh, of the Wang 2200F. Lots of small ROMs, uh, they didn't have large ROMs at the time, let alone RAMs. So there are lots of little chips uh, on this board. It's not fully populated, it can have more RAM than what you're seeing there. It's about half populated, but it's plenty for my purposes. Off it goes. A bit burned on the other side, it was too close. Uh, to the to the to the end uh, of the tube, the CRT tube. Let's just take a moment now and appreciate uh, electronics art from the mid 1970s. I find this gorgeous, gorgeous boards. These are the little memory chips. Two rows of them. And now we've exposed the monitor subsystem in there, the analog board that drives the monitor. Quite some work to be done in there, certainly recapping it. The monitor has its own power supply. Now that's the large heatsink with the main pass transistor of the system and two diodes above. I will certainly change this pass transistor and the diodes. They operate under very high heat. 60, 65 degrees Celsius is normal. So I'll change them. They're probably beaten up. And the circuitry for the deflection, horizontal and vertical, it's mounted on the chassis, uh, on the sides of the subassembly, not on the PCB itself. It's quite curious. Reminds me of the 1960s. The good news is that there isn't much in the way of pin corrosion, so I don't need to pull any chip just to treat uh, pin corrosion. That's very good news. Now, looking at the date codes of the different ICs, uh, most of them are 74, there are a couple 73, 76, a uh, few of 77. So I think this is a 77 or 78 uh, machine. There is one big pass transistor that was 79, but it has signs of rework. So I think the 79 stuff uh, has been serviced. Uh, this is probably a 77 or 78 machine. Now, very interesting is that Wang uh, put discharge resistor on all of the large filter capacitors. So the capacitors are uh, uh, automatically discharged when you turn off the machine so you don't get a big, a big shock. That, that's pretty good, that's neat. And this is the, the power supply board that generates uh, the six DC rails. There are three uh, pass transistors for the plus minus 12 and plus minus five volt lines. They have some signs of rework as well. So I pulled the board to have a, a better look, a better inspection. And you see the four rectifying diodes, which I will replace. These work under stress, so I'll replace them. That's a mylar capacitor. It's usually for high frequency filtering. It's probably still working, but it's begun to unroll. So I, I will replace the, the, these mylar uh, capacitors as well. 
Now that's the elephant in the room. Do you see? Do you see right there? That's a big problem. That's a blown trace. Uh, a lot of current has passed through this trace in order to blow it out like this. So this is a sure sign of a short circuit. And it goes to the first pass transistor there to the left, that little green one. And that's for the minus 12 volt line, I think. That would explain why the computer is not booting and clearing the screen, because uh, the ROMs, where uh, the microcode is, um, and the program that the computer executes, uh, you know, the, the kernel code, they require the minus 12 volt line. So if the CPU cannot fetch instructions, it will not clear the screen. That also means that that pass transistor is probably busted. And the question is, did the transistor go bad and then blow the trace? Um, or is there a short circuit somewhere and then blew this transistor, the little green one, the RCA8203? That transistor is probably gone. The other two pass transistors are probably okay because we have characters on the screen. So we know the 5 volt line is okay. Probably the minus 5 and the plus 12 are also okay. Probably. So let's investigate this. Let's measure the resistance across the three terminals of the first pass transistor, which is Q2 on this board. There we go. It's a short. <laughs> Everything is shorted. There is a short from uh, uh, base to collector, base to emitter, and collector to emitter. <laughs> this transistor is now just a wire. Um, again, did it go bad and then cause the short circuit, or is there a short circuit somewhere else that caused the transistor to go bad? That's impossible to determine at this point. Um, I will make some measurements later. But for now, this is what I wanted to share with you. We have our work cut out for us. There are these three main digital boards. There is another digital board under the keyboard, which I will show you later. There is a controller in there, the power supply board, and the analog board of the monitor. A lot to do. I just wanted to give you an intro today. I will see you next time for more. Till then, take care.